Welcome to Mikun's Hardware. Today I'm going to take a look at this rather unique X99 motherboard from China. The motherboard is called Honan GX99 ZD4. The difference of this motherboard and other Chinese budget or not very budget motherboards is the size. We have already seen multiple full standard ATX motherboards which have about this length and we have also seen multiple different budget MATX motherboards from China. They have the same width as X99ZD4, but they have slightly smaller depth, about like this. So this Huanongi X99ZD4, it has the full MATX size. The motherboard looks rather interesting, but its current price is a bit too expensive as for me. You can buy it from AliExpress for about 75 euros. The difference between Huanan J X99 ZDD4 and something like Machinist X99 RS9 will be about 20 euros. The biggest question to ZD4 is, is it able to handle E5 2678v3 or other CPUs with 120W TDP? But first, let's take a look at the technical specification of Huanan G X99 ZD4. Unsurprisingly, the motherboard comes with the LGA 2011 socket mounted on top, and you can install Xeon E5 V3 V4 CPUs as well as Intel Core i7 6000 and 5000 series. To install memory, we have four DDR4 slots in quad-channel configuration. This means that it does not matter which slots you are using first and which ones you are using later on, because each slot has its own dedicated memory channel. To install expansion cards, we have PCI Express X16, PCI Express X1 and PCI Express X4. X16 and X4 are connected to the CPU, thus the speed is PCI Express 3.0. PCI Express X1 is connected to the chipset and the speed is PCI Express 2.0. Additionally, there are two M.2 slots, one here and one here. This one is to install SATA SSD drives and this one is to install PCI Express NVMe SSD drives. The SATA connector is sharing the same port as one of those connectors for SATA 3.0 ports, Thus, if you install here an SSD drive, one of these is not going to work. The motherboard has only four SATA 3.0 ports. This one for PCI Express NVMe SSD drives is unfortunately located right under the PCI Express X16 slot and probably will be covered by a dual socket graphics card. This might lead to some SSD overheating and in my opinion it would be better if Huanan Ju would locate the slot over here. As you can see, there is enough empty space to either add one more M.2 slot or just place this one over here. It would also be just better if they flip the location of these slots because the SATA SSD drives are usually heating up much less than NVMe SSD drives. For the front panel, we have everything you would wish for, audio exit, 3-pin fan connector, and here you will find one more 3-pin fan connector, then we have a COM port, debug LED, front USB 2.0 header, front USB 3.0 header, additional 4-pin fan connector and clear CMOS jumper. This jumper is the clear CMOS function. Then we have a debug LED or postcode screen, which is rather annoying. I know that some people like to have it because it helps debugging while you're assembling computer. But if you compare the time you use the computer and you assemble the computer, you will figure out that this postcard will probably be used like a fraction of your time. If you have a chassis or a case with a transparent side panel and you're trying to make your computer look nice, it's pretty annoying to see these red digits or letters through the transparent side panel if you're trying to make a neatly looking gaming computer. This speaker is also rather annoying. I will probably have to do something about it, but it beeps on every start, which I really hate about it. Of course, here you will find exits or connectors for the front panel buttons and LEDs. The BIOS chip is located over here, which is very good because there is nothing around the chip and uh, you can freely connect your clip from CH341A or some other external USB flash programmer to read or write the BIOS. The 24-pin power connector is over here and the 8-pin power connector is over here. Location of both of the connectors is rather good, which I like. 4-pin fan connector for the CPU fan is located over here, which is also not bad. Let's take a quick look at the SATA ports on this motherboard. So unlike other cheap Chinese motherboards, this one has got two extra SATA 2 ports, 
These orange ones are SATA 3 and these black ones are SATA 2. The SATA 2 ports are rather slow and you would probably not want to use it with the quick SSD drives, but it is just fine for slow hard drives. On the back side we have a slightly different configuration compared to the cheapest boards. Here we have two PS2 ports, four USB 2 ports, two USB 3 ports, then we have two additional USB 2 ports, Ethernet port and an audio codec. The audio codec is Realtek ALC887, which is uh, significantly better than uh, the cheapest one, Realtek ALC667. The power delivery system consists of exactly the same three-phase PWM controller, but we will talk about it a bit later. As always, all my test results you will be able to find in my PowerPoint slides by the end of the video, so if you are interested in all the technical details and everything I have tested, just uh, go to the end of the video and scroll through the slides. But in the video I'm going to mention the most important and the most relevant uh, things about the motherboard that you need to know. Let's start with the CPUs which have limited number of PCI Express lanes such as i7-5820K and i7-6800K. So, Huanan GX99 ZD4, the same as Huanan GX99 ADMF, has proper layout for the PCI Express lanes. If you install a CPU which has limited number of PCI Express lanes, everything on the motherboard is working properly fine except of this PCI Express X4 slot. This slot is connected to the PCI Express lanes on the CPU, which are missing on i7-5820K and i7-6800K. Any other Xeon CPU which you can install on this motherboard has 40 PCI Express lane, that's why even if you install the cheapest E5-2620V3, this PCI Express X4 slot will be functioning correctly at PCI Express X4 3.0. In my previous video, when I was testing Machinist X99 RS9, when I was installing i7-6800K, I reported to have an unknown device in the device manager. So, this time I had a bit more time to investigate and dig out what is that unknown device. It turns out that that unknown device is Intel Turbo Boost Technology 3.0. That technology is only implemented with i7-6800K and not present with the Xeon CPUs. That's why I did not see the unknown device with the Xeon CPUs, but seen it with the i7 CPU. For some stupid reason, the driver is no longer available from the official Intel website and you have to download it from some other sources. Nevertheless, after manually installing Intel Turbo Boost 3.0 driver, the unknown device is now known and it's recognized as Intel Turbo Boost 3.0 technology. So everything is working fine and there is nothing fishy between Huanan Zhe and i7 CPUs. Huanan Zhe X99 ZD4 works well with this GT710 when I install it into PCI Express X1 or PCI Express X4 slots. During the test, I have also figured out that sometimes the graphics card is not recognized by NVIDIA drivers, but recognized by GPU Z. After tweaking and trying to figure out what's going on there, I have figured out that I really need to push down the GPU into the slot in order to be recognized by the NVIDIA drivers. It's probably related to the fact that some of the contacts might not be secured well enough because this PCI Express X1 and PCI Express X4 slot do not have this securing lock mechanism to keep the device in the slot. Thus, it may be the case that Huanan GX99 ATEM F also works fine with this NVIDIA GT710 graphics card and I was just not able to secure it well enough in the motherboard. If I will have a chance, I will retest it, but for now I can tell you for sure that it works well with Huanan GX99 ZD4. I have also tested this X4 slot using external SSD adapter and the slot is working fine with PCI Express 3.0 X4. To test USB 3.0 ports, I have used my external Samsung SSD, which is Samsung T5, which is my standard usual equipment to test USB 3.0 ports, and as you probably know, multiple cheap Chinese motherboards are hanging, lagging and crashing when running Crystal Disk Mark or USB 3.0 ports with this SSD. Huanan Zhe X99 ZD4, the same as X99 ATEM F, completes the benchmark in 5 to 6 minutes, which is a very good result. Yes, during the benchmark the system was hanging a little bit, but it did not crash and didn't do any weird stuff. The hand was resolved pretty quickly and the benchmark was completed. 
The same behavior I was observing on multiple other branded motherboards, thus I would not be concerned about it. The USB 3.0 speed is slightly slower than expected, but it's much better that we are having a properly functioning USB 3.0 ports, even though they are a bit slower than you would get from the modern chipset such as Z490 or B550. Another good thing about Quantum JX99 ZD4 is a properly functioning sleep mode. I have tested Windows 10 x64 and I have also tested Ubuntu 2004. Sleep mode works well on this motherboard. System goes to sleep and wakes up, not like Machinist X99 RS9, which goes to sleep and then never wakes up. Additionally, I can say that Honor GX99 ZD4 boots up much faster than my Honor GX99 TF. I'm not sure what it is related to, but ZD4 is just booting faster than X99 TF. One extra thing that I would like to mention is the audio codec used on ZD4. This motherboard uses a Realtek ALC887, unlike the other cheap Chinese motherboards which are using Realtek ALC667. I am not a musician and I have quite bad hearing, but even me, I can hear a difference in the audio quality. ALC887 sounds much better than ALC667. I'm not sure if this is important for you or not, but it's good to know, at least. Even though Huanon GX99 ZD4 does not have major flaws, it still has the standard Chinese issues, such as non-working power temperature sensors. So, you will not be able to observe how much power is consumed by your CPU due to the cheap power delivery system. It's also not possible to monitor the temperatures of the motherboard. The temperature sensors and the power consumption sensors are providing wrong and misleading values. Unfortunately, you just have to live with it. Another issue is that the smartphone function is only working for the CPU fan connector. This additional 4-pin fan connector is not regulatable from the BIOS and you will not be able to adjust the fan speed from the BIOS according to the CPU temperature. I have heard some reports that you can use some external software to do that, but I did not have time to try that. Another downside of Huanan GX99 ZD4 is that the stock BIOS does not have RAM timers configuration. Still, with the modified option, you can do that. I have turned to a GitHub user named Koshak1013 and he was kind enough to make me a BIOS modification with unlocked RAM timings configuration. This BIOS option as well as multiple other TurboBoost unlocked uh, options are available in Mi 899. Thus, if you have ZD4 motherboard and you would like to tighten your RAM timings or perform TurboBoost unlock with Xeon E5 B3 CPU, you can do that with a few mouse clicks using my Mi 899 application as I said, support to Honor GX99 ZD4 has been added. Now, let's talk about VRM or power delivery system on Honor GX99 ZD4. From the top, when you are just looking at the components and at the power delivery system, it is exactly the same as Machinist X99 RS9. We have a four-phase controller, which is using only three phases to power up the CPU. Each phase has a doubler, and each doubler has two phases. Each phase has two MOSFETs. So, PWM controller and the doublers are exactly the same as on Machinist X99 RS9, but the MOSFETs are slightly different. I am not even sure if these MOSFETs are the MOSFETs that I am finding online. The name consists of two lanes. The first lane is identical between Machinist X99 RS9 and Honor GX99 ZD4, but the second lane is different. I was not able to find any specific specification for the MOSFETs which are used on this motherboard. If I search by the first lane of the name, that I am leading to some specification which might be correct or might not be correct. With the Chinese, you never know, maybe they have made their own MOSFETs with a similar name to some other known MOSFETs. What I can say is that the MOSFETs are most likely different between ZD4 and X99 RS9. Simply because with Huanan X99 ZD4, testing ADA64 stress test using E52678V3, Turbo Boost unlocked, after 45 minutes the system, or the power delivery system, has warmed up only up to 72-73 degrees Celsius. This is very unexpected, because I thought the power delivery system is identical to Machinist X99 RS9, and I was expecting to get the same 85 degrees Celsius. 
Still, I have left the ADA64 stress test running for one hour and the power delivery system did not warm up more than 72-73 degrees Celsius. The only reasonable explanation for this phenomenon would be that Chinese are using different MOSFETs on the X99 RS9 from Machinist and on Huanangji X99 Z D4. Even though the power delivery system looks identical and seems to be identical, it seems to be different. So, it is what it is, I'm telling you the results that I have got. ZD4 has warmed up up to 72-73 degrees Celsius, which is absolutely safe, and I would say the motherboard is able to handle 120 watt TDP CPUs. To make sure that my comparison is apples to apples, I even measured the power consumption from the wall using my external wattmeter. In both cases, both of the systems, Machinist X99 RS9 and Huanangji X99 ZD4, consumed about 180 to 200 watt from the wall. Thus, it's not about the power consumption, and if 52678v3 is performing exactly the same on these two motherboards. I have also validated the frequencies between the two boards, and it was exactly the same turbo unload driver. Thus, the only reasonable conclusion is that Huanangji X99 ZD4 has a better power delivery system, which means it uses better MOSFETs, because uh, the PWM controller and the doublers have exactly identical marking on top of them. One more thing that I would mention is that the doublers on Machinist X99 RS9 are standing separately and are not cooled down by the radiator. On Huanangji X99 ZD4 the doublers are mounted under the radiator, so MOSFETs and the doublers are cooled by the radiator. Still, once I mounted off the radiator, I have figured out that the thermal pad was not long enough to cool one of the doublers. Of course, I have replaced the thermal pad with another one, which will be cooling down all three doublers and all MOSFETs, but the ADA64 stress test was completed in the original configuration, which means that even though one of the doublers was not properly cooled by the radiator, the system was still not reaching 85 degrees Celsius, which we got with the Machinist X99 RS9. To be more precise, temperatures on ZD4 stayed under 73 degrees. Okay, so all in all, I really enjoyed Huanan JX99 ZD4. It seems to be a very decent motherboard. Quad memory channel, all possible features on the motherboard you might need, except the M.2 slot for Wi Fi expansion cards that can be sold with this PC Express X1 expansion slot. There you can install your Wi Fi card if you need it. VRM or power delivery system, even though it uses some unknown MOSFETs, is still able to handle 120 watt CPUs such as E5 2678v3. Maybe even E5 2690v3 with Turbo Boost Unlock will be fine on this motherboard if you add some extra airflow over this heat sink. You're also getting a better audio codec and you're also getting a few extra USB and SATA 2 ports. Of course, you're still facing issues with the temperature and power consumption readings, but these issues, in my opinion, are rather minor, and if you are looking for a budget system using the Xeon CPU, this might be the motherboard for you. Unfortunately, the price for the motherboard is not the best. 75 euros is kind of expensive, in my opinion. If the motherboard would cost 65 euros, I would say that it's definitely a better option than Machinist X99 RS9 or Huanan JX99 Atom F. But with such a price tag, my final score for Huanan JX99 ZD4 will be also 7 out of 10. If the motherboard would cost slightly cheaper, I would give it 8 out of 10, but 7 out of 10 is a good score, and you have to decide yourself if is it worth for you to pay the extra money to get the extra features and extra quality of this one on Gmail the board compared to Machinist X99 RS9 and similar other options. For now though, that's probably all I can tell about one on X99 ZD4. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope you have enjoyed it, I hope it's gonna be useful and helpful when you're gonna be assembling your budget-friendly gaming or working computer. Goodbye.